Welcome back, everybody. Navi versus Rogue is about to begin. We're here to fill you in on all the deets. The new kids on the block, literally, in Navi versus Rogue on the other side. The major champions coming out of Berlin. I'm really excited for this one. It's two different, I guess, different thoughts, different ways of playing Siege, potentially, that we could see today. And we're going to have a chat about it. I'm Milos. This is Fresh. And Demo. And Demo, you were talking about Navi as the youngest team in EUL. What is what is the average age? 19 or so. Damn. Around about that. So, yeah, you've got a very young side that, that we're dealing with. And but wait a second. Fresh was saying that they're probably the team that's come up with the most wins in the transfers. Yeah. Zone, right? Mm -hmm. We think so. Why do you think so? We, we just think, well, we think long term that the players that they've picked up, uh, they've picked up a load of players yeah. that have got a lot of long term viability, a lot of longevity, and uh -huh. even though they've got a young average age, they've got a lot of experience between Nathan and Kayak as well. This has been a complete rebuild of Nav. I don't think people have realized Navi have completely rebuilt. Since this year, they've they've changed four players. Yeah. And a lot of those were core members from, you know, even going back to the, the Japan finals, whenever they, they won that championship. So it has been a full rebuild, a full revamp of this entire side. So I, I'm kind of moving into this game today, and I don't really know what to expect, because I would say they've changed a lot even from last season. Yeah, I think so, but I don't know. It's one of them. The, the players they picked up, they're exciting. And it, why are they exciting? <laughs> Who are those new players, Look, and why they, are they, they picked exciting? Up Teb, they picked up Leader. Yeah. Leader was the most coveted, probably the most coveted tier three player that not even was available. That teams wanted. You know, there was multiple teams, four or five EUL teams wanted him. Right Correct. now, we've been the ones that end up getting him. Teb, like we said in the pre-show, very hungry player, first Italian into the league, mm -hmm. has impressed in his national leagues. Um, came a little bit out of left field into a UK team, but they clearly, you know, he, he cooks for them. They, you know, he, he, you know, he provides good vibes, and he puts, you know, he plays. There, in the there is a specific well. reason why they have went for Tab because, you know, like we said, Nate's been around for a long time. So has Kayak. Both of these have played with with top tier players. They know what a good player whenever they see it. Yep. And there was a lot of people available. We'll go give a nod probably to two of them. I think me and you maybe expected to see, and that would be Oscar coming in from Victus, another high coveted player, and also Jags from Tenstar. Those are yep. two players that me and Jack were expecting to maybe get a shout. But Tebs beat both of them in Navi's eyes. So that has to say something, and we rate yes. Oscar and Jags very, very high, highly. So, yeah, you have to trust what the teams went for, and you have to back them. And it's a big challenge today going up against Rogue, the major champions. I think it's pretty simple. Best team right now in the world. Best team in Europe if you're accounting for everything, taking down G2 also in its older form. What are your thoughts on it real quick? Rogue are kind of defining the way that Siege is played and is going to be played probably in Europe across the next six months. Mm -hmm. They're very much ahead of the curve. I said this during stage two. The way they're playing is disruptive, is aggressive, is fast, it's good to watch. It, they've got two guys at the back who are controlling it so well in Leon and Deepak, and then they've got the star men up front. Rogue's big, I suppose, concern for me is how are they going to react to teams wanting to beat them? They are the team that everyone's going to elevate their performance against. Yeah. They are the team that everyone's going to be going after. We haven't had a back-to-back -back champion since 2019. There's nobody who's yeah. been able to be at the top and stay at the top. Everyone has always fallen off. You look at NIP, they fell off. You look at TSM, they fell off. You know, these, these teams that were at the very top have slowly just been getting pulled down because everyone wants to beat you. This is my main concern for Rogue this season is yes, they're the major champions. Yes, they're the best team in the world. You need to maintain that. You, you are number one. They need to go and win another championship literally in a, in a couple of weeks' time. They need to start here, though. Let's play the trivia for just a moment. Who was that team that won the last back-to-back -back championships in 2019 that Demo just mentioned? Just gonna leave it for a moment. Everybody in chat can put it for a second. I didn't know we were doing a quiz show. This is right up my street. Jack? Nah, that was on Sunday. No, no, no. Show. Jack? no, 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 no. No, you know it. You I don't know. Back-to-back -back championships in 2019. Would it be G2? No. No? No? It was Empire. Empire Milan, won Pro League and oh, then Oh, I was, majors. sorry, I was thinking like majors and SIs. I didn't realize you was counting Pro League finals. But Pro League was, was basically the major. Yeah, okay. Anyways, our map for this series, which is, I hope you got your answer right for all the old people in there. Please oh, make sure you check your backs. I definitely did. Oregon in here, Navi picking it up, going to defend start very quickly. Your thoughts? Um, Roke looked very good on Oregon during the major. They pulled it out, they played it against Exet, they played some very, very good teams on Oregon. Navi have lost it in their last three times they played it. The last time they played it, I think it was a 1-7 that they were playing um, in stage two. They didn't win an attack, they didn't look particularly good, but obviously this is a brand new Navi roster. It is, and I think that that's the thing about Oregon is, 
it's very basic. Everyone knows how to play it. And I think with bringing in these two new players, it may catch Rogue by surprise because, you know, how are you going to prep for potentially Navi having a full playstyle? I think that might be able where, where Navi can get the edge up is Rogue just have no idea what to expect. Same as what we do. We have no idea. Gentlemen, thank you very much then. Let's see what comes up in this game. Temo and Fresh, thank you very much. That was Rogue and Navi in preparation. The Young Gunners of Navi versus the Major Champions of Rogue. And we got Destiny to take us through it. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Milos. Welcome back to the desk, guys. It's me and Big Tim. Tim, we have got a test to do here. Have you still got the God Voice? Have I got the God Voice? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think at this point it's going to be a thing until you back out in the studio with us, you know. I mean, we might as well keep it in keep it keep it in place. You know why not? <laughs> it's uh, I can't tell if it's haunted or fantastic, but I enjoyed that, Tim. I enjoyed it as much as hopefully Both in equal measure. <laughs> Absolutely. As much as surely many of you at home will be enjoying this game if Rogue come out on top. 93% of you back the current major champions to win against Na'Vi, a team that, as the desk covered, have had a little bit of a rebuild, brought in a couple of new players, and hopefully have got something new to show us this stage. Because, Tim, they were one of the teams fighting it out in the bottom three of EUL across the last stage, really lacking a sense of identity. And I'm hoping, like Heroic in the last game, we see Na'Vi show something new here today. Yeah, I mean, thinking about that that social vote, I I favour Rogue as well. Um, I would favour Rogue for it. Do I think it's a ninety-seven to a three? You know, the ninety-three to a seven percent split. No, I think that might be a little bit harsh on Na'Vi, if I'm honest. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Rogue, yes, they've just won the major, but we saw them have their hiccups in the last stage. You know, we saw that they were beatable sometimes against the teams that we thought they should be beaten. Um, so, you know, Navi have always got an opportunity here, especially on a great... I, I used to say that Coastline was the great leveller, and I think <laughs> Oregon is, is now that in the map pool that we've got as it stands. Any echoes? For a second, I thought we might even see an echo ban coming in against Deepak, but here in Oregon, it's going to stay put. Ban-wise, though, the Nook and the Decay probably the two spicy or the spicier of those four bans coming in. The Nook, a target ban coming out against Kryon, who has played that operator excessively, it feels like. One of only four still in the game with frag grenades in back pocket. And the Decay definitely more niche for this map, I imagine, somewhat of a target ban in towards an RV, but also somewhat showing the style of play that Rogue want to be employing on their defensive side here, Tim, which is getting out in the map and causing a little bit of bother. Yeah, as you say, a very unusual uh, ban with the Dockerby. We really don't see too much of it. And it's interesting, the pick on Kryon to begin with. I was going to say, if you can't bring the Dockerby along and you want to shut down a wrong game, you've still got Jackal in play. You've still got Lion in play. And the combination of those two can be way more oppressive than having a Dockerby on there. So we'll see how that pans out. We'll see how big an impact that is. Rogue obviously planning for that. You know, we'll take Dockerby out of it and then we'll bring along the other options. Uh, you know, to be able to do the same job. We'll see how much on their defense in the second half they play into that, how widespread around the map they play. But right now, I don't think Na'Vi are going to be leaning into that too heavily. Um, they've got the Clash on side, so Nerf's going to be downstairs uh, with the Clash trying to keep the shield probably in and around Bunker and rear stage stairs to begin with. Might see it shifted over to Laundry stairs as the round goes on, depend what's, uh, depending on what's going on. But for the time being, we've only got one or two upstairs, and I don't think that'll last too long for Out of the aggression in the comps that we've been seeing today, Lion has been really popular throughout the day across the games that we've had so far. Probably because of the, the versatility that Operator now offers. Of course, got a fantastic gadget. Got the Gon6 in back pocket, got hold of the EMP grenades as well. Brings a lot to a team, along with a pretty decent gun as well, when you think about it being not quite an LMG, but also not an absolute mile away. And we have seen quite a bit of the Finker sticking in. Of course, lost the frag grenades, now has flashes and smoke. Spoy opting for the former here. But that juiced up ability, the spear still not being a bad gun. Yeah, overall, still seeing some of the same operators we're used to seeing out of this rogue side. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of the rubber band effect today for Finker. Um, you know, where the changes have come in and teams have gone way right away from it and we really haven't seen too much pick. But as you say, still potentially a lot of value in that operator, particularly with the global ability. So we'll see uh, just how much impact Spike can have on Finker and whether it might just drive her over a week or two if we start seeing some good performances, might just drive her back into the meta a little bit. But uh, for the time being, I think the uh, the entry game is, is very much in the hands of Zafia, which which is going to be crying, looking to push down into the rear stage area or possibly bunker here. 
It's kind of nice, as weird as it sounds to say this, to see Ash and Zofia so back in the meta. We saw Ash in some of the earlier maps today, obviously not seeing her in this round, but we have seen Zofia where she hasn't really been present. So between those two, expect to see a lot of those as the games roll by throughout the next couple of weeks and teams learn more and more from each other. Rogue so far being, I don't want to say slow in this round, but they have really taken their time in getting themselves set up. We're in towards that last 60. They've got three or four angles ready to push, and now it feels like Rogue are going to start their push in. Crying just holding the corner just in case the push comes through from elbow but for the time being I would expect leader's not going to move anywhere away from there he's going to play behind that shield and just keep those toxic babe canisters bouncing off now then Skiddy um, able to get a few shots onto the Xkaros pellets that were just trying to open up onto Shaiko's spot there and that is going to continue to happen whilst there's army barricades are present it does oh, allow C4. a free drop into electrical beautiful C4 from Teb cooks up an absolute wonder there in the freezer as Skiddy manages to get Leon as well and this is a huge advantage for Na'Vi now oh. that they've got Naif on the shield as well. But Spite goes in with a little bit of magic. Manages to find Teb and takes a chunk of damage away from the Clash as well. And all of a sudden, there's Rogue are just starting to walk on in towards Sight. But Cryon, he's going to be stopped inside of the bunker. And that could be the critical kill here. It's all down to Deepak and Spite. But time is ticking by. This is not going to be easy with a Clash on the board. Skiddy gets one. Where will the final kill come from? It's up to Deepak, but it's the clock that causes the round. And that's going to be Na'Vi taking number one. It's so like I said for Rogue, it felt a little bit slow. They did change their minds about 90 seconds in in terms of who was pushing from where and then managed to make this three-point push work with Spoit coming up through Freezer, a couple coming up through Laundry, and you had Crying coming up through Blue. So something we're kind of used to seeing across like LATAM at the early stages of last year was things like one player coming in through Big Tower whilst they had this south side push coming in at the same time. So it was a small bit of variation on that, but a little bit too much agency being given there to Na'Vi, I feel. The Clash really giving a lot of control inside a highway, controlling a lot of the attention and commanding it away from Rogue, or sorry, from the Clash onto other players. They were safely hidden away and has collected up a couple of very critical kills in the late stages of the round. So a solid start for Rogue, but a good first First round for Na'Vi, who held on firm and have that first round on the board. Interesting site. Uh, interesting site choice for site number two. It's actually going to be meeting and kitchen to uh, to move us on to, which usually we would see it be dorms or maybe even a repeat, uh, you know, of, of getting over to the other side, going into dining. Um, obviously, laundry locked out for Na'Vi. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting choice. Usually we'd see this as the third site choice, but Na'Vi just decided um, that the top floor is the one that they're going to keep in the bank or potentially the top floor is that the one that they're not too keen on. Well, Straight away, what we've seen, Tim, is Leon move over to Thermite from Habana, and Deepex also bringing along the Ossa. And I think when you see those two operators, you know exactly what is coming on this side. They want to get control of Big Tower. They want to get the wall opened up. They want to get the Ossa planting just on the stage behind the safe cover of one of her shields. So keep a close eye out for that. You can see two or three members from Rogue putting all their focus on Big Tower here. Really, what you can look to do is get one Ossa shield at the very top of Big Tower, looking down towards Attic. You can have one inside a green that looks down towards Kitchen. There are options that you have basically but now at least it feels like their focus is on this top floor where there's a shield there's ads there's operators being stationed by navi Spike's going to get himself into the rear stage, up to T2 there. Looking to get aggressive on to the man in Attic. Sees the one down in pit, but can't find the shots. I think it was Skiddy just playing in there and certainly uh, courting with death there as he poked his face out in front of Spike, but just not able to land the shot. So he's moved across to the Ash this time rather than doubling down on the Finker. Um, so in a 5v5, 1 minute 50, a leader still on the rear stage stairs. And Na'Vi looking pretty solid at the minute. Rogue haven't been able to dislodge them more just them so far not just yet however it isn't super late into the round it's only that one minute 20 in so i think you've got a bit of time here that they can work with i'm just worried about them getting stuck as they did previously it's spoit playing for the backstab as well on the ash pushing his way in right now solo through towards kitchen will he catch one on the rotate almost but that one shot that didn't connect is enough to give the game away it's not just spoit by himself anymore there's two or three players here all swarming up onto the top floor tim they want to get rid of these roamers right here and right now but it's skiddy to strike first onto leon what a critical opening. Nah. 
this is it just not really having the impact onto the Rome game or the defensive Na'Vi that Rogue might have wanted Kanto he's going to be trying to use one of those vertical nades now we've seen less of these we've seen a little alteration to the damage radius of the grenades and it means you just need to be a lot more accurate on those vertical nades and it makes them a lot more difficult Kanto unable to find any damage onto anybody but Cryon manages to cut down Kayak as he moves across into Kid Storms looking to push Pit as well gives his game away with a few shots and Skiddy is able to react and find the kill but shut down quickly by Deepak 38 seconds left to go and with 2v3 for Rogue Na'Vi look like they might just hold on their hold of top floor has been fantastic it really took Rogue a while to warm up towards droning and playing for trades off each when they got there though things look better Kanto finds one finds two he's left in the one versus one it's against the new boy of leader he's got three smokes in back pocket and 15 seconds to play with if he plays this smart he can absolutely win it out but it's got to be so wary they've also got this through hand to the walls the right hand side as well blasts out the barrier and Kanto comes off the plant he's baited him a little bit here Tim he's going to move towards a different site and get his plant down inside a kitchen but you might just find that he's going to go chasing him at this point they know that it's going to hit zero round he comes he'll finish it off but will he come off in time no he won't leader wins the one versus one and will stick the defuse Beautifully played by a leader there. Absolutely worked it perfectly. Managed to move Kanto along, get him into a new position, basically burning more time on that clock and just left him in a position where he could not really react to leader then chasing him down and getting that final kill. So perfectly played by the new boy to Na'Vi and he's going to close out round two, giving them a good advantage. I tell you what, it was heart and mouth moment for Na'Vi fans for a minute there as you just saw shades of Kanto Ricketti turning into Lanto Ricketti again. But this time online almost securing the 1v3. I do again want to commend Na'Vi for how they held the upstairs there as well. I know for Rogue it was I don't want to say blind but they were kind of pushing their way in without information fully on where those two players were. It's only when they cleared out the kids player did they then manage to start focusing on the one inside of Pit. But Skiddy, I thought he was going to get baited out by the drone. He was looking at the drone as the attacker of Crying rounded the corner but the flick up onto Crying was wonderful. Did die to Deepak in a trade straight after. So Rogue did have some of the right things going for them but by then the damage was already done. Really well played by Na'Vi to keep on wasting the time, burn the clock down and find more kills and they lost members. Going to be heading into round number three there and it's going to be that top floor choice that I spoke about at the beginning of the last round and I think we see why Na'Vi were happy to take meeting and kitchen, able to lock it down no problem and now they've got a pretty decent site to go at. Um, going to be trying to hold on to the top floor this time around. Heavy presence out towards showers. We've got the rotation made through um, at the bottom of white stairs there as well. We've got an ADS, we've got a shield, we've got a lot of utility. We don't usually see this much investment in the lower floor beyond playing somebody in security to try and prevent people coming in through the double window but this is going to just give a little bit more of a platform to keep that player safe but these angles from the windows particularly will make that more difficult the cancer unsurprisingly here just bearing on down this front set this the uh the lobby sorry hoping this one's going to rotate back through from towards split for example but no such joy spoit's got his way straight or armory back on that finker once again by the way of course, I've spoke about it earlier on. No frag grenades on side. LMG is now absolutely in the gutter. Doesn't mean you can't get, can't do damage, though, with the spear. So we'll keep a close eye on exactly how much Spoit can achieve. So far, a slow start at just one and two. But don't forget, we are only two rounds in. Spike going to be pushing forward straight away, taking aggressive control over Trophy here. This is a pretty good start for him, really. It's getting a good bit of map control for uh, Rogue, just enabling oh, them. Oh, that's a little bit of a mistake there. Uh, just enabling them to get that master wall open. That gives access to a plant spot, potentially, and now opening up pits as well. So this is already becoming a difficult site for Na'Vi to hold on to. There's an opportunity where they could get into games and think about putting this diffuser down without too much impact impact come in from the Na'Vi defense which is all stacked up more towards the kitchen side of the map. I did wonder where Deepet was. It only made sense bringing the Thermite that he would be either pushing in through walking wardrobe, which we'd already seen controlled by Leon on the ace. The only other spot to push in from was Attic, and that was where his focus was. Now in comes Leon looking for a fight, but can't bring down Skiddy, who started this game off wonderfully. Five and one so far, he finds himself as Kanto comes out with a nade, trying to find him on the exit, but simply not going to happen. Na'Vi, it's like boxing with shadows right now. You take a gunfight, they win, they move away. You have to redrone it. They're making sure Rogue are constantly having to ask questions. Deepak under the cover smoke, walking his way down towards pit, but we'll find no one there as again, you've already seen these members of Na'Vi back away. 
This is the problem, as you say, falling back and just taking punches as they do so. Skiddy finds his second before being cut down by Crying. Nath manages to kill on to Deepak, and that leaves us now in a 4v2. Teb is going to be down, but not out. 31 seconds, though, for Rogue to make a move and do something here. Don't have Diffuser in hand at the minute, so they're going to need to collect that as well. And these precious seconds are ticking by. Spoit looking to get aggressive in towards oh, Pip once again. Leader. Cut down as he does. It's Leader. It's Kayak. It's the round to Narvi. 3-0 and another surprise start here. I don't think I've seen anyone play that angle so tightly tucked as what Leader was playing it then. Using the bomb chassis, just his head barely visible above it, holding the rotate angle that came through near to the double window. So if someone had come charging in, for example, through the doorway, different story. They'd probably get the jump on him, but he held it so well and even with the juiced up Finker pushing on in, all too easy for Leader to get the shutdown. Na'Vi looking very composed so far, Tim, and I'd hate to think how many channel points have been thrown onto Rogue winning this game that could very quickly be lost away. Oh, I think there's going to be a good few. I think there will absolutely be a good few of those. And we're going to see the tactical timeout coming in from Rogue. Of course, their very last match that they played competitively, I don't need to remind you, was that major final in Berlin going down as one of the best games that we've seen played in all of CG Sports history. Mm. And this is looking like a little bit of a, a different performance from them. There's really not stepping up to the same mark at the minute. It's funny. I was um, talking to, I forget who it was, if it was one of the Rogue players or not, but I was talking the other day to someone involved with Rogue and essentially said, my only concern for Rogue right now is they're going to get hit by the curse, the winner curse of a major event. We've seen TSM, NIP, SSG, somewhat even FaZe as well. You know, Dark Zero didn't make it to the next major, but when these teams have won, they've just somewhat faded into obscurity in the following months. You know, FaZe, it took them a good nine months to bounce back up and put on the show that we saw in Berlin where they could have been the winners for a second major in 12 months. But outside of them, every other team has struggled. So for Rogue, I'm like, all they've got to do is, well, it's not all they've got to do. There's a lot more to it than just do these three steps and you'll stay as number one team in the world. It's so easy. It's about not getting complacent. It's knowing that just because you've won something, it doesn't mean you'll keep on winning. You've got to keep on applying yourself like you were doing the first time round to get that win. If that slips off, these new teams that have now got the fire in their bellies, they've got new players coming in. They've got that honeymoon phase that we talk about sometimes. These are the kind of threats you're going to be facing and you've got a massive target painted on your back where every team has poured over your VODs to see how you're playing this style. I can't count how many times I've heard about teams trying to copy the rogue play style. Again, target on your back. Lots of teams will now be coming for you. We've really got to see them hold on tight. To say that we saw Na'Vi on a little bit of a specific drone hunt there. We saw Nerf chasing one or two down, but they only managed to take one out during the prep phase. So that's pretty good for Rogue. They'll have their pre-places in position, ready to feed them information, which is exactly why Spike's been able to move in as quickly as he can, as supported by Kanto as well. And we found ourselves now 40 seconds in to a basement attack. Last time around, Rogue didn't really manage to get any sort of execution set up. They didn't really get that far into things they tried to probe at bunker a little bit they applied a bit of pressure into freezer but for me it was just a little bit disjointed what i loved him is spoit has changed guns here across a couple of rounds he was playing the g36c earlier on the ash and i was like huh everyone's talking about the r4c why is he playing the g36c i imagine now he's had that realization of oh either i was on the wrong gun or it's not working there's a big push coming on down but the problem is you're facing off against leader's shotgun and we all know how this tends to work out already claimed one victim has burnt through two smokes but it's a good one to find it's spoit off the board G36C, R4C, there's only one C that Leader's interested in, and that's C a later spite as he takes him down with a big opener, and Leader certainly living up to the excitement around his pickup in this game so far, doing fantastically well for Na'Vi, just playing a smart game. It's not about getting kills necessarily, it's about where he's getting them when he's getting them and what he's doing after them particularly and he's really giving Na'Vi a great opportunity to take round after Ryan Cantor he's going to go in with a nade there do some damage to Nerf going to force him to back away actually I thought Nerf might get a little bit more aggressive onto that challenge but just didn't quite have the timing or the knowledge there to catch Cantor out and instead he's going to relocate himself into the cubby and just try to look out and avert any pressure coming from the bottom of laundry stairs yeah relocating resources here as well putting operators in key positions to hold down different angles of ingress for the attackers and for Navi again it just feels 
unflappable. They don't seem bothered that they're facing down against the current major champions again. They don't really feel threatened. They look comfortable and composed, which is something I haven't said about this team for a long, long time. Kanto's out of nades and still trying to make Freezer work. A C4 in hand for Nape as well as he's daring this man to step his way through. Kryon finds one. Does the C4 come out over the top? Yes, it does. But Kryon's already dug a little bit too far back. Manages to take out that Nitro before it hits the floor and certainly before it can be detonated. Trying to push forward now, but it's Deepak that you got to watch. Oh, He's crying. getting that diffuser down, crying with an absolute beauty through to the cubby. He sees oh, the man oh, on the rotate oh. and he takes him down with a headshot. Kayak, he starts to fight back, but it's going to have to be a 1v3 and deactivating that activated diffuser. He's trying to push his way through, but he's going to be seen as soon as he steps through the rotate. Does he get his man? No! He's watching the freezer, but Deepak has stayed right on top of that case and he's going to shut his man down and rogue they managed to take their first round on attack it's a starting point for sure i mean if navi has started three in this round came down to cry and having a massive 3k coming in through the bottom of laundry there's still some work to get this one bounced back. Also worth noting, by the way, Tim, Rogue are technically two-time champions at the minute. They won, obviously, the Major recently, and they also won the LEC Finals in League of Legends. So a big shout-out to, I guess, to Rogue overall, but also to one of their backroom staff that we've referenced several times over, uh, Bernie, who was there with them at the Major. She's one of their performance coaches. Uh, she went from winning the Major to getting to work with the LEC team and seeing them go through to another win as well. So a big shout-out to Rogue and also to Bernie for what has been a miraculous few weeks for the rogue organization mm, fantastic going we'll see whether they can bring a little bit more success into in a smaller perspective the map here in oregon they've managed to get the first round they need a few more and rv choose not to go back downstairs they're going to move themselves on no wonder to be honest they played kitchen and dining back in round two and it was a very very good performance it was well held and they showed us exactly why they might just be keen for it to be their second choice site uh, really can uh, controlling things right up to the end it was a bit of a you know mammoth effort from Kanto really to even bring Rogue back into it. It was one versus three um, before he was able to bring it back to the one v one. So this time Rogue a little bit quicker about deciding to push in through the dining side. Last time there was a little bit of probing elsewhere, but look at the speed of this attack from Spoit. Yes, yeah, Spoit has done this round after round. This has always been his entry in through small tower, straight in towards dining, and he's instantly bearing down on kitchen. You've normally had a player try and push their way up big tower stairs as well. They're trying to go in with pace here and shut down this top floor hold from Na'Vi, but once again, Na'Vi so far looking undeterred. Kanto the only one taking damage in the round. Kayak just holding a tight angle inside of Kid Storms. Of course, Na'Vi wanting to hold on to the top floor for as long as they can. They don't want to give up that vertical pressure. You can deny plants up there. You can get angles onto all the important spots. They'll want to keep hold of Attic. And and there's else you keep hold of meeting. Skiddy, he's going to open things up with the opening kill onto Cryon. And opening kills has been something that Na'Vi have done really well so far. Taking a command in the early parts of the round um, and then just able to give themselves a bit of breathing room, sit back, but there's no breathing room for Kayak as Leon pushes forward, gets him and gets Nath. They still really want this top floor and Skiddy is the angel of death from up high. The second kill comes through the hatch before the third one is found up on the same floor. He's still expecting one more to be there, but Kanto had worked his way down. Here comes Leader on the swing, but Kanto's just better at 2k. And now Skiddy has got to do it all. He's already found three, Tim. Can he get the last two and take Na'Vi up to four and one? It's going to be a big, big effort for him here. He's currently on 9 and 3, though. So he's Spoit's back on the G36C him. again. <laughs> he just doesn't know where he's comfortable. Spoit, he's going to be putting that diffuser down, and that's not something that we say too often. But as the kills have come in, they've no choice but for it to be their leading man trying to get that diffuser down. He does so successfully and Skiddy. He's now coming in looking for these. They know exactly where he is. <laughs> Hidden around the corner. Spoit steps out, gets the final kill, and that's going to be Rogue bringing us back to 2-3. All right, we got the settle. We got the settle. <laughs> they managed to pull things back ever so slightly. And the thing is, taking two rounds on the attacking sound, on the attacking side, sorry, I wouldn't complain. If this goes back to three and three, and Rogue have clawed it back after being down three and zero, miraculous recovery. One that, given how Navi have played, I wouldn't necessarily say Rogue should have been able to do. I know the three kills they got in that round, Navi. This is all came from Skiddy playing in the same position. But outside of that, again, we just saw Navi being so willing to contest that top floor. The Taking a gunfight inside of kids, for example, a player steps across from concrete and takes a swing on towards white door. It's not like they're being aggressive for no reason, but they are responding to aggression coming out of Rogue and trying to hit them on the side angles as well. It's really good from Na'Vi, but it doesn't change the outcome. They are now only three into up, so Rogue have closed that gap. 
to the top floor then for the final defense for Na'Vi. It's going to be Dorms and they managed to get this successfully as they did with each of the sites last time around. But what Rogue has shown us is they've been able to adapt as they've moved through. It may just be a little bit of, um, you know, Na'Vi having plan A, but maybe not being too sure on plan B yet. They've had a couple of roster changes and it will take time for them to just, um, you know, create that strength and depth in the strat book. And it could just be that Rogue coming back and just adapting, adjusting slightly is leaving Na'Vi on the back foot. Rogue certainly coming out stronger in the second second half of the first half so the second quarter i guess you would call it um but they're going to be looking as you said as four or three three and they'll be absolutely mm. laughing if they can get that they know that that's going to be a steal spike not into the map quite as quickly this time no, no. um although i think we will see him hop into showers showers corridor pretty soon but just being cautious because they know how much utility narvi gave over to this ground floor hold last time and it's not looking too different this time around now it's slightly different in terms of the push like i say every single round except for this one he did come pushing in through towards dining. Maybe a bit different this time around as Skiddy is at his number yet again. Spoit set up three and five and Skiddy's ten and four. What a game he's having. Reborn by the introduction of players like Leda and Teb. A second kill in the round and Rogan is walking into his bullets at this point. You've got to be asking questions. When do they find a response? It comes down in the form of Leon, but is it already too much damage found by Skiddy? Like you say, it's uh, quite a lot of damage that has been done at this point. Rogue 3v4. Uh, but again, we've seen uh, Cryan have those important mid-round moments that he's so well known for. We've seen it a couple of times so far today and really catapult Rogue back into a round. They're going to need more of the same. We're going to have the double Claymore coming out from Deepak. Um, of course, operators with Claymores were budged up to two recently and it does give that freedom um, to potentially just increase the safety net um, that is in behind you. So he's going to be avoiding and getting flanked. Sending the drone in will not see the man just inside of pit yet, I don't think. Hidden behind the Azami barricade. Surely as the jump comes in, that is going to be seen. Leon elsewhere in the map taking quite a lot of damage there. Going to be down to half health now and with one minute left to go, Rogue just feel like they've stalled out a little bit. Ever so slightly. I mean, when you've lost your two entries, it's definitely going to take the wind out of your sails whilst the rest of the team tries to figure out, OK, exactly what are we pushing here? How are we pushing it with the limited resource that we have got remaining? They have worked their way, at least Deepak has here, up through Attic and Leon finds a second one back before being traded by Kayak. It's not looking terrible, but there is still work to be done to recover this one. Skiddy still stays standing, as does Leader, the two players that we've been shouting about constantly throughout this game. Deepak pushing forward, just going to hold his line mm, for crying. the time being. Don't want to be giving his life away too much on this top floor hold. He's got the support from crying underneath now that will start to move those defenders around and might just give Deepak a little bit of freedom. But those pre-fire shots are going to tell Na'Vi exactly where he is. Comes around the corner, gets one, but Deepak is going to be all Honestly. alone. As Skiddy finds one onto crying Skiddy finds two onto Deepak. And we might just well keep shouting the name Skiddy. Skiddy finds four in the round. The two entries and the two closing kills as well. Just, I think before we came on, uh, Fresh was joking. Oh, it's Skiddy season and it is now Skiddy season. I know last stage we didn't really see him shine as brightly as maybe he would have anticipated. I feel maybe Na'Vi had some good ideas throughout the season. I remember one of their games against BDS employing some really creative Amaru use on Villa. But they lacked a lot of the sort of... The pressure, the ability to drive forward, to make things happen. And in this game, I wouldn't say so far as they're going to making that happen on the defensive side, but you've just seen there the support being offered around that top four to Skiddy. Several players being there to challenge, but not just that. He's done it all by himself. And the worst thing of all, Tim, he's done it with an MPX. That's the most ridiculous one of the bunch. It really is. It's, you know, not one of the most powerful guns. Uh, you know, we do see it having uh, problems at range sometimes, particularly um, for Valkyrie, for Warden, for example. But as you say, just going and having a little bit of a field day with the old MPX. So moving into round seven, I think this is where the difficulty probably ramps up for Na'Vi. They've been playing it on hard so far, but this is where they move on to extreme. I think Rogue um, on defense of Oregon, we're going to see a slightly different beast. Deepak is on 
on the Echo, which you pointed out, hadn't been banned out, Des. We've seen this from him before, using those 10 seconds very wisely and very aggressively to get outside of the map with the Yokai, not even burning that time as he's that. just very careful with his position on the drone hole, but he'll work this with Spite and they'll try to combine for runouts. It can be a deadly maneuver. Well, it was crying upstairs on the Legion trying to peek in behind the white van, but the Lion had already left and departed, but it's just so rogue and so deep at to use it that way and Kryon is just ready for Kayak walking on through. No drones at his feet and Kryon finds a massive 2k. It's Naif and Kayak taken off the board and Navi are down to just three. If you remember, I said that the difficulty had been ramped up from hard to extreme. <laughs> I think we've just seen exactly why that is. Aggression being brought out from Rogue he has here. No idea. Um, using that utility and that information fantastically well, as you say. It's going to be one of those where they're getting killed and like, how did he know I was there? And they're going to watch it back and kick themselves because it's something that Rogue have done time and time before. Now, Skiddy tries to get himself inside of the map. Ideally, he'd be looking to get a kill here. But Rogue, they're smart. They've dropped themselves back away to site. They know the job's done half of the round wasted two kills to their name and Na'Vi scrambling for any idea of a plan anything that they can do to try and start getting this back in their favor it was the sort of thing that I criticized outsiders for um, earlier in their game against Wolves for was you find a kill or two out on the roam you get back on towards site you make it too easy for Wolves to formulate an attack that gives them the most advantage against the players based on where they're set up but one given it's rogue and two knowing they've found two without trading anything back I think that's the right call. They've gone back in at a minute and 45. They've reinforced with a bunch of walls. They've looked to try and make things really difficult. And because they haven't got a challenge really aggressively in towards Freezer, they've reinforced it off to make sure Highway's a little more secure to play inside of. And they can just challenge Teb here as he tries to work his way up deep Freezer. So Na'Vi are limited on options on how they can try and play this out. Ryan just going to move himself into Harry Potter and again just using every nook and cranny here you can see we've got one down by the bomb chassis in laundry as well going to make it very difficult for Na'Vi to push in from that side Teb has got quite advanced into Freezer here but they know the Nitro comes out will detonate Great, do no damage as the nade comes in look at that nah. get aggressive Spike just runs straight past it absolutely not a problem he knows that that nade hasn't been cooked for long Crying, he's going to cook the man on the back stairs it's going to be skiddy taken down and it's all up to Lee right now one versus five he's had a great performance so far but that great is gonna have to go to amazing and it can't as leon shuts him down flawless rain for four bro much better and that's what you're expecting to see from rogue right outright dominance here on the defensive side i really thought knowing that the kb was banned away by them we spoke about this a bit earlier on it being taken off the board you'd see a lot more roaming out of them but again when you've got those two kills they must make that team call back towards site here we haven't got to engage anymore just let them really sweat as they try and push in towards the site and they played that to perfection as said this is where navi are going to have to come up with some ideas here because i can very quickly see this becoming four 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 five and before you know it it's rogue in the lead well then, top floor it will be for Rogue. They are not going to be taking meeting as a secondary site as Na'Vi did. They're going to be sticking with the more default rotation that we would expect. Leon's on the Frost, um, which is always a fascinating one to keep an eye on. We'll see where those mats are placed. And I know a lot of people will think, oh, you shouldn't be getting caught out at this level in a Frost map. But when you're in your ADS, when you're pushing in towards site, you're worrying that you're maybe going to have spite or crying, challenging you. You're ready for the fight. It's very, very easy for it to slip your mind or for it to just slip around your scope for you mm. to not even see it and you end up snapped into one of those. They can truly win rounds. So we'll keep an eye on those as we progress. 3-4 it is to Rogue as we move into round eight. And Na'Vi, pretty standard lineup for the push here. But interestingly, have a look at the operator that leaders brought along after that last round. Unsurprising, they want to try and control those roams potentially. Or just cut off the angles back towards site. Time will tell, but I imagine for Na'Vi it's going to be a case of getting control of certain parts of the map and then looking to lock it down. At least for now, taking things nice and slow. They're not running in towards Deepet, for example, not offering Rogue the same joy that they had on the defensive side when it was Skiddy finding out a couple of kills inside of Dining. So it is more composed, but a big utility dump coming here in towards the doorway so they have an angle in towards Bedroom. 
awful lot. Uh, we saw nades, we saw flashes, we saw uh, it sounded like a gun six as well, clearing off the barricade. So all sorts going on there to try and give access in towards Mastra. Nothing really taken for Na'Vi just as of yet. And it's going to allow Rogue to reposition. We see Spike particularly moving aggressively into games. He's going to use a barricade, um, as I thought he might, onto the closet there just to keep it closed whilst he manages to get the reinforce up. Beautifully done by Spike there. Just buys himself the 15 seconds that he needs. And right now, Nerf, he's on a little bit of a wild goose chase down here trying to find any potential roamers. Like you say, you know, yep, door could be taken out, but there are other options that Na'Vi could be using. I think Kanto is the only one playing on the downstairs as well. And there is one that's just come up uh, Big Tower stairs. I think Nave just lets him slip here. This could be critical as well. That could be Crying getting into a place to be able to reinforce back off towards Dining. And they've managed to slip by him. But now does Crying know that he's been isolated and cut off? I'm not so sure he does. It's leader to start off on that flank watch on the Nomad. A kill onto Deepak. Good start. Crying did see, I think, a bit of a shadow inside a meeting as well, but didn't quite recognise oh, it, boy. maybe. Leon Run. manages to get skiddy. Nade is going to force Spite out of position. Four versus three as the kills have been exchanged in either direction. Na'Vi are sitting pretty at the minute. Just slight advantage to them, but Dorms is a great site to hold on to in a man disadvantage. You can play deeper and deeper in towards the kids' dorms, in towards Pit, oh. and just try to hold on exactly like that. Spite gets the spray down onto Teb and levels things out. 40 seconds left to go and this round is anybody's. A little bit of a cheeky pre-fire never hurt anybody's point. Nice stuff, nice stuff. 3v3 Na'Vi. As you say, I've got the last 30 seconds. This is where they've got to make something happen. Being able to find these rounds where it feels a little bit lost, a little bit hopeless. Being able to dig deep and pull these out. But without Skiddy, the star man who's put up so many numbers in the first half has struggled to make an impact here in the second. It's Kanto to find one more. Rogue looking to equalise things up here as we get towards the last 10 seconds. Gonna be trying to put that diffuse down. No, he's just using the sound, just looking for the bait. Nerf manages to get one onto Leon, but Kanto onto Kayak leaves Nerf now in a one versus two. Three seconds left to go without putting the diffuser down. This is done. Spike finds the kill with the pistol, and it's gonna be Rogue leveling things up for four. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> naughty boy. Style points fusing the pistol at the very end, but we'll take it. That brings us up to that four-four point, though. Tim, as we said, you start to feel that swing. You start to get a little bit nervous. It's not just us. Na'Vi are also in agreement, calling in their tactical timeout after just two rounds on the attacking side. Feel that clearly there are issues that need to be addressed now and not in maybe two more rounds time when things are still going south. Exactly that. Um, Na'Vi not wanting to let it slip. I like to see this. Uh, you know, we often see uh, teams taking tactical timeouts when they're facing, you know, match point and they're already, uh, you know, at best getting an overtime out of things. I like to see this 4-4. Let's just try and stop it here and now. Um, Rogue are a dangerous beast now, though. This is the first time in the game that we've seen them actually draw level and they've been behind consistently throughout so far and you just feel like that's going to put the wind in rogue sails now and we start moving towards that result that sort of felt inevitable coming into this one but you know Navi have really put a question mark next to they've really thrown it into a little bit of a wobble a little bit of a suggestion that they might be able to get a win but rogue are just feeling like they've uh, notched it up a gear and that's something that i'd say is characteristic of rogue or certainly was through stage two of eul is that ability to sort of keep things level, keep toe-to-toe, -to -toe, feeling like they may be being sort of beaten in the long game, but then all of a sudden, they just find that extra gear. Take it up a notch and just run away with it. The thing is, I know exactly the kind of stuff that Sathus, the analyst for Rogue, will come out with later on, which will be, ah, well, the first four rounds, Skiddy had a life game. He played unbelievably well. Of course, it's going to happen from time to time. And I wouldn't massively disagree with him. I did compliment Na'Vi overall on their play style in the first half, but a lot of those rounds did come off the back of Skiddy just being an absolute beast upon the top floor. And now sides have switched. You're seeing players like Spoit starting to come online. He was like three and five, I think, back in the first half. Currently now up to six and five. He's starting to warm his way through. We've seen a 3K out of Cross Ryan, for example, it's all well and good having one player doing well in one half, but then for the second half, where's that wing going to come from? And that maybe is a small uh, issue we're seeing here for Na'Vi on their first play day is when they're back on this attack inside and you haven't got Skiddy really top fragging out like he was back in the first half, what's going to work for you? 
Very quick progress from Na'Vi here, getting that wall into meeting opened up. That's going to make it a little bit more difficult um, for the Cade of Deepak to play in the position that he was planning. But Spike, he's going to open things up for Rogue here, managing to find a kill on Toledo, who has quietened down in the second half of his, his debut so far. We saw him have a couple of big starts, but um, certainly gone off the boil. I feel bad for him there because he's got up to go and get on with the right stuff as well, getting himself inside a small tower, go and sit on drones, but... On his way up the stairs, has just been caught out by Spoit through the vertical, I think. Or out at least through the double dining wall. And yeah, bit of a stinger to lose your IGL. At least with your IGL going down, though, he can now call the rest of the round. Kyat looking to work his way through Trophy. Clearly a lot of focus on the upstairs here. Spoit almost getting taken down as somehow he's worked his way all the way up Big Tower. What's he doing? Spoich is having one of those games where he just appears he absolutely everywhere. Exactly that. Wherever the fighting is thickest is exactly where you'll find Spoich. He's going to get himself back into sight, trying to hold on to the long angle for the time being, but on such low health, definitely it needs to be cautious. Teb just trying to open up an opportunity to dump a nade into the back of Kid's Dorms there. He knows there's going to be a player on the boost spot, but can he make the shot? Out comes the nade. Yes, he can. Absolutely beautiful. Opens up his angle, finds his kill, and that's going to be Kanto taken down. I thought for a second he might even find two there as there's a second player rotating back through kids, I imagine, aiming for the hatch. For now, though, they can start setting up for the execute itself. Drones have already done their work on the top floor. Now it's about getting the floor completely opened up, forcing out these defenders in towards security, out and towards meeting, and looking to get a plant down just inside the kitchen door. Opening up the verticals. Can't find anybody at the minute, Teb. He's looking uh -huh. down into security. Nobody there either. Um, and Rogue actually doing themselves a, a really good job of keeping themselves off the radar here. But the chip damage might just take its toll in the long run. Leon and Spike both down to low health. Probably one bullet apiece will see them out of this. So they're going to have to be very picky about the fights that they choose to take here. And on defense, you don't always have that luxury. We're going to see the drop coming in now as Kayak goes in with that diffuser in hand. Opportunity for him to get it down. Climbs upon the counter to try and do so. I'm not sure they're aware C4. this is... Yes, they are. Out right? goes the Nitro. Can he get it? The Deepak matter. doesn't go him. for the detonate. As you say, they've managed to shut down the kill on to Kayak. Leon manages to find another doing the most he can with a little bit of health. Four seconds left to go as Cryon shuts it down. And that's going to be another round for Rogue. Three in a row now. And they are starting to build some momentum. Real shame in a way because I thought for Na'Vi there they had everything being played right. They had got control of the top floor. They'd forced players away. They'd you know smashed everything to pieces to force them out of security. Out and towards Zulu. Out and towards meeting itself. And everything looked to be clear. But the problem is with leader being dead so early in the round and him being the small tower player they had no one to be able to challenge on towards leon who was sat inside of dining and for him managed to get that perfect little side angle to be able to bring down the planter and that put a massive spanner in the works of navi so it just goes to show the snowball or the domino effect here leader being shot on by an off chance by spoit there with a lucky couple of shots early in the round really did cascade in towards navi just not having the right coverage they needed to get that plant down down to the basement we go for Rogue then. So far, 100% success rate on defense. They head back where they were in round seven. If you remember this defense last time around, it was a great little roam to kick things off. Uh, burnt the first half of the round, got themselves a couple of kills, and saw Na'Vi find themselves trying to attack onto the basement site, three versus five, and that is always going to be a tall order because there's just so much to do down there. Utility to clear, angles to press, and they just weren't able to get it done. So this time we see similar from Rogue. They've got themselves out in the map. Crying. he's going to be playing uh, rear stage and tower. He's going to be playing into attic. He's got all that area opened up for himself. We've got the drones coming out from Deepak exactly as it was last time. Teams have to learn that this is what Rogue are doing and it's exactly how they are getting those aggressive early kills. <laughs> it's just... Again, we really see, we've seen a lot of players today try and play on the Echo as well and try and make use of the Okai's in the same way. I have yet to see anyone really try and make use of like drone holes the same way Deepet does. And I know I keep on droning on about it, ha 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 ha, but it is super impactful. Crying here was looking to get cheeky with the assistance of these Okai's once again, but opted to change his mind. Now it's Kanto's turn down here on the front door. 
He knows that they're there, the yellow ping's coming out, as well as the vocal information. Easy as that! Steps out and gets his kill onto Skiddy to open things up for Rogue, and you just feel a little bit Des like Na'Vi are broken here. They had such good momentum, but they're just not reacting very well. They're not showing good resilience here to the beating that Rogue are starting to hand down. Nick oh, hit just sight, managed hit to sight. find one onto Leon, and this is it. Hit sight whilst Rogue are not there. It's all going to be down to the players who are and as they try to make their way back in kayak is in position to punish as his leader and this is a turn up for the books for navi this is such a good read by navi massively commend them for this one spoit no idea there's a man towards this right nade at his feet has to back away they've got the angle to push in through here if they want to it's the oryx dash to charge on through from canto but now they've got to get the reposition can't, can't quite finish off on towards nathan i think with this diffuser down this is too big an outer road to be able to recover I'd agree. I think it's just going to be a case of waiting for players oh. to move into angles. Double comes in for Kanto. He's got about 15 seconds left to find two more kills. He knows where one is, but the utility's being used against them. The deployable shield coming in clutch for Na'Vi there, keeping the man alive. And that leaves Kanto with about four seconds left to go if he wants to disable this diffuser. No real choice but to stick it. And that's going to be the round for Na'Vi as Nerf manages to step up, halt the progress, halt the momentum of the runaway train that Rogue were turning into to and leave us now in a 5-5. The scary thing is that call that I can probably imagine came from leader was the kind of call that Rogue would have made last stage. And in fact, I want to say in the game against Wolves, Wolves actually made that kind of call against Rogue. They saw there were three or four players offside and just said, right, boys, in through lobby, straight down main stairs. We're hitting the site. One, two, three, go. And they really did manage to get in there and get the plant down. I can't remember if they won the round or not, but it was a really decisive moment. You've just seen Na'Vi do exactly the same thing. I don't think we would have seen old Na'Vi pull off a play like that. So it's a really good read that has now got them back in the game. They're at five and five. They win one more round, Tim. And suddenly they're looking at at least one one point in overtime if not two if not the full three if they can do it all the way over towards rogue and stop them getting another single round but truthfully i think overtime is on the cards it's certainly looking like it could be as you say it's definitely in the balance i'm not really too keen myself either on saying that rogue are going to get back to back rounds here but it will all start on the top floor if they do interesting shield position from leon there just suggesting there's going to be a much tougher hold of master this time and um, we saw spike trying to hold on to it he sort of played in through games used the keeper barricade to be able to reinforce that wall up when the opportunity presented itself but um still navi were able to take over that area reasonably easily so rogue just wanting to hold on to that with a bit more uh, aggression and Watch for Kayak on the Amaru. Well. Yeah. Well, they made use of the Amaru last time, but couldn't really net too much from it, if I remember. They remember when he came charging up through Trophy, sorry, up through Kids, in towards Pit, and got gunned down by Crying, who was sat there on the Legion. They have the answer to plays like that, and it's almost like they've come to expect it at this point, Rogue. But Crying doing what all good Jaegers do, starting halfway up Big Tower stairs, getting rid of a drone, and then backing down into the basement. Ryan just going to be holding his angle for the time being on the stairs there. Just looking to see um, if anybody tries to push him, but I don't think Na'Vi are going to be playing into giving anything away too easily. Spite, as I said, in that very aggressive position at the minute. Just going to dump a magnet outside, actually, hoping <laughs> to pick up any utility, any nades that come in to clear that shield out before anybody goes onto the balcony. The it's bird gets the worm they might because they'll be concerned. <laughs> it certainly is. The early bird in this case being the magnet. It's not much of a bird, but I guess it does at least fly through the air, right? We'll make it fit somehow. There's an analogy in there somewhere. You try. You try your best. You try your best. <laughs> Nate's working his way forward. F2 in hand, I imagine. Ready to go. Gat, gat, gat on the way through. The C4 coming out. Almost blows into the sky. To sky high. But no. At least for now, keeps himself intact. Is down, though, to about 45 HP. The F2, actually, Tim, in the recoil changes, is one of the guns I still really like. I know they've increased the vertical recoil by about double, but it's a little bit more in line. It feels still quite predictable. So I do think we'll see more twitch as the stage goes by. Yeah, very likely, especially for pro players. Like you say, it's not necessarily about the amount of recoil. Um, it's about the predictability and the controllability um, that they're able to, to display over it. And like you say, mm. Twitch is one of the more popular. She will certainly stick around. But Nerf, knowing that he had to dip himself away after the Nitro had come out, it had given his location away. He knew that they knew where he was, so he didn't want to overcommit to that. Skiddy sees his man, but he just can't quite react quick enough. He's going to actually drop away from that double window. Opens it as he goes because he knows that it's going to take some 
attention. It's likely to hold at least one gun trained on it at that point, and it might give him an opportunity underneath, but with 35 seconds left to go, Na'Vi, they need to start moving. I was going to say, Skiddy has yet to find a kill this half, but he's just found himself too. That's the kind of opening they need, but it's crying a spite. The duo coming back in with three huge kills between them. Kayak finds one and gets the second as well. Na'Vi guarantee at very least overtime, but Tim, their eyes are on the prize. They won all three. Of course they do, and you've got to look at it from a rogue perspective here. This is week one. It's not the end of the world, but... You know, you can look at that both ways. Yes, there's plenty of time left to go, but we won. They've already dropped some points straight away. Simple as that. And that's what we saw them cost the top spot last stage. Um, in stage two, it was just the fact that over the weeks, there was a point dropped here, a couple of points there, and ultimately, it took its toll. They still got themselves to the major, still won it. But if you're looking to assert dominance and take that number one spot, you got to do it right from the off. Um, you know, we've already seen Wolves take that win. And so, Rogue... Um, uh, if they're looking to challenge Wolves for that top spot this time, they're putting themselves on the back foot. Oh boy, oh boy. We live a bit of destruction at the start of a stage, Tim. It's like I said back at the very start there, Rogue have got that target painted on their backs. Navi have got that honeymoon phase going on where Teb's come in, where leaders come in. The high they'll be on if they win a game like this as well will be massive. Imagine bringing down the current major champions. For Rogue, the implications may all be felt later into the stage because, let's be real, Na'Vi are a team that you should be taking three points away from if you want to be finishing top two teams in the stage. Absolutely, absolutely. The thing is, from Rogue's perspective, if you want to finish top two, you've got to be taking as many points as you can off everybody other than Wolves and maybe one other. You could maybe look at you know, BDS if they play particularly well, G2 if they play particularly well. Um, you know, one of those teams, I know we haven't seen the best of starts from G2 either so far tonight. So, um, but yeah, Rogue, you can't be dropping points to everybody else in the league. And I mean, that's assuming that Na'Vi aren't going to be one of those top two teams. Mm. You know, we may well see this performance continue. But for me, I think Rogue have given them a couple of opportunities. Um, you know, they've... They've given up some kills. Um, Na'Vi have taken them fantastically well. You know, how do you control Skiddy when he's playing like this? It's never going to be an easy one, 15 and 9. Um, but, you know, on a different day, I feel like when Rogue have had that momentum through the mid-game, we'd have seen them go on and win that probably 7-4 at mm. that point. But no, Na'Vi have dug deep and got themselves back in. You know what I love most of all is that they've kept on getting away with this echo play. Na'Vi will watch back the VOD late and they'll be kicking themselves at how they kept on getting away with it too. But it'll be one that will struggle to work again because teams will begin looking out for that. Kayak's down to about half HP. Has had endless numbers of grenades thrown at him and has been put low. Spoit finds Skiddy though a critical kill. The kind of play you want to be finding. And here's Ted to try and bring something else back. But he's had a pretty slow game overall. Only sat at 3-11. Kryan steps out and finds one. This looks like it's going to overtime to if this one carries on. Monty turns his back and Kryan makes it a second. It's a 5v2 for Rogue. It looks like we're going to have to go to overtime to see who walks away with the lion's share of the prize here unless Nafe and Lida can pull off something special. And we start off stage three with a 50% overtime rate. There's <laughs> a it couldn't be any other way. Now then, now Nif trying to challenge down rear stage stairs, just trying to get something going towards site. There's going to be pressure from the Hibana of leader towards Freezer by the look of things as well. He's currently in kitchen, moves to security. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to choose to open that hatch or not, but he's probably going to be challenged from Zulu, so needs to be careful, crying, moving himself back. But I tell you what, he's not giving it up, is he? He's absolutely no intention um, of not taking the fights here. Once he knows that leader has gone, again. he'll no doubt push his way back down, but leader has got so much to do do here to get anything going and Nafe has just been holding his position waiting for leader to get into his and then they can call it to push together to maybe find a crossfire but there you go we managed to find one but the toxic baby's just keeping them at bay for the time being still so much to do is being blasted by the yokai that comes in through the drone hole like this he'll do the same again in a second i cannot believe how long dpec keeps these drones alive for when using them in such aggressive situations as well it's unbelievable nave looking for a second and we'll find it leader gets another surely rogue surely after all we've said we don't see this one going against you crying's holding on to one side deepak on the other they've got the yokai's coming in through but leaders found it surely not like this deepak's got to hold on deep there's only two seconds left will they be able to find him in time they see him but the rogue hold on just by literally a hair a microsecond they keep it going and take us through to overtime Unbelievable from Rogue there as they just managed to How grab a hold of that. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> it was 2v4 like to 2v1. No, V, you really, really giving up an opportunity there to potentially close it out. But Rogue able somehow to just keep the fingertips on the cliffside there and keep themselves in it. So we move into round 13. It's going to be overtime, so it's the best of three rounds from here on in. Now then, the halves have been 4-2 in favour of the defenders. So we would argue there is a possible <laughs> advantage for Na'Vi here coming in. But, 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 Rogue won the two of the final three attacks in their attacking half. So... It's not quite as clear cut as Tim, that. I've got to lift the red curtain a little bit here and talk about the antics going on over on our desk. We were in that five versus two and Demo turned to fresh and said, if now we win this, I'll dye my hair blue. So you can only imagine what Demo's face was like as that went from a 5v2 to a 4v2 to a 3v2 to a two versus two to a 2v1 and then Rogue win by what? 100 milliseconds more and he was probably a dead man. It's unreal. I can feel his relief from here. <laughs> he looks I like can. he's had a bit of a sweat on now and he's cooled himself down. <laughs> I can imagine that he would have done. Teb, he's going to be setting up inside of dining once again. Quite a high line coming in from Na'Vi. We saw it more with Dorms, um, if anything, playing right up to showers. But Teb, he has committed to this hold over in dining. Going to try to burn as much time as he can. He needs to be careful that he doesn't get cut off from White Window if he wants to rotate himself back. He'll have to go through Kitchen just to be sure of his safety, especially now Leon has got himself into Shower's Corridor along with the Sledge of Spite. And that is going to see, I think, Teb just dipping himself away. But 45 seconds wasted. Not a bad start for Na'Vi. Not at all. A couple of changes coming in as well for Rogue in terms of who's playing what operator. You've got Deepak across on the Finca with the smokes on side. It's definitely more supportive. Spoit finds one. Going to back his way up towards the top floor here as well. So he's found a kill on the ground floor and then worked his way upwards just to try and make things even more complicated for the side of Na'Vi, who as of this moment don't have anyone working across up on the upstairs. I know why I was confused by that, Tim. I don't think I've... I don't remember the last time I've seen an attacker with a shotgun. I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> What's going on here? The, but it's a sledge the with a shotgun. <laughs> The last time I recall seeing an attacker doing? with a shotgun is Sledge, but it's when, if you remember when, um, when Buck got uh, the nades taken off him, so people started bringing Sledge shotgun so they could have the nades and the shotgun destruction. But Leon, he's going to absolutely wreck Teb there, taking his head off. Nerf manages to find Spite and take the shotgun out of proceedings. Nerf's on a little bit of a roam here with the Mozzie as well, just moving himself through classroom um, for the time being. But three versus four, Rogue still looking reasonably comfortable on the attack. Still got to get in more control here before they can start thinking about the downstairs. And Nafe is tucked inside of the classroom. Really wants to throw the book at Leon here if he comes challenging on the way through. At the minute, he's not. Attention now turned back towards the hatch. And this is where Nafe could pull off, pull off a massive backstab. Tries to find his man, just can't yeah. quite connect <laughs> with the head. Gonna I tell you what, he's They're just in. keeping fighting here though. Kayak is gonna manage to find Leon as the drop comes through. Kanto fighting at pillars, gets one. Could this be Rogue playing Navi at their own game here and just going straight into sight and taking command? Leader, he's gonna drop back, manages to get one, but it's oh, all up no. to him. It's now 1v2. He's gonna have to find three no. kills if he wants to close no, this. He gets leader. one, he gets two. Unbelievable clutch from Leader. Effectively one versus three as he just takes them down one after another and that's unusual for Rogue the timing just wasn't quite there to ensure a trade good lord move the hell over Breed Day. there's a new SMG sheriff in town god what a round again Na'Vi just keep on pulling these kind of plays out it's miraculous first off we were big enough Skiddy and like leader the whole way through and for him to clutch out that two versus one that's what you love to see. That is payback for the previous round. Na'Vi now one round away from taking those two points away from Rogue. No matter what happens, both teams will likely sit in the middle of the table as we have had three zeros, or three zeros. Three points to one team, zero to the other. But just look at these shots. The dude's absolutely unbelievable. Knows where the first one is, then goes for the second one straight away, hits the critical shot without reloading, turns on the second and brings down Deepak as well. What a play, and what a play to make on your debut. It's been fantastic. Navi are going to be, so you know, not critical, but you just think if he could have continued through the mid game, he just had that quiet few rounds in the mid and late game, and you think if he could continue with that, 
Navi probably aren't in overtime here. They've got the straight win and three points. Mm. But, you know, we can't put that on leaders' shoulders. It's, you know, it's down to the team effort. But he's had some fantastic moments so far and certainly a bright star to watch up for the rest of this. Uh, four players now on the side of Navi got themselves above the 10 kill mark. But we've got that Yorkai drone coming out again. Is it going to prove their undoing as Rogue try to hold on to the basement? The main downside is although they've made good use of the information coming out, they haven't really netted many kills off the back of it. The only one I remember them getting was the push in towards Lobby when the Yana came charging through and whoever it was from Rogue kind of stepped out towards the side from Zulu and got a freebie. So it has been a lot of... I don't want to say a lot of investment. It hasn't been because you can just relocate those drones, no problem. But it has been a lot of time and attention given towards trying to make early plays off the back of those yokais that so far have only netted one kill. But that one kill could have been what led to that round being won. And give him an overtime, Tim. Every kill counts. Ryan just pushing forward in pit here, sees his man, he's going <laughs> to take rare, a rare occurrence where he takes a flashbang to the face there and takes five damage for it. Takes Face's a lot in. more as Nerf steps in and manages to find his kill. He's looking oh. for more and he finds it! What a shot from the book! Taking down Kanto, 5-3 now and 4-3 is spite. He gets an essential kill, but this is falling apart, Des. Na'Vi might just get the full win, the two points. They're absolutely laughing here. Skinny was looking for the next angle on the downside. I think he's got the right idea here surely rogue don't come pushing up leon backing away at the last second would have been suicide to try and go too aggressively up those stairs but kayak from above it's leon left standing against four members of navi all four of them with 10 plus kills in this game i don't see him holding on leon He's trying every angle that he can here. He's checking the hatch, he's checking the freezer, he's checking laundry. He wants to know what's going on all over his site. Takes a drone down, finds one man, three left to go. Drone finds him though. This is where it gets difficult because they know his position. They come in, they start pre-firing. He's going to move around the corner. Does he find oh, another? Leon. Yes, he does. Leon, it's a 1v2 now for a 1v4. He's got 50 seconds to hold on though. That is an absolute age of time. Skiddy has drones in oh pocket. My God. Leon finds him and kills him with two drones in pocket. They could have been absolutely critical, Des. That could be a big error. Leon, in a 1v1 now, can start to play time. Leader, he's trying to get the diffuser down. And I think he's going to have to stick it as well. Leon didn't know that he was so far away making it happen, but support all combat in the back lines. Leader on the swing. He finds the shot. Na'Vi are going to take their two points. It's another wonderful clutch out of Leader. Sees Na'Vi bringing down the current major champions. We gotta give props to Leon there. Did he give us some excitement in the 1v4? So close to closing that out, but ultimately, Na'Vi managed to keep themselves in it and get the round locked down this time. Unlike round 12, they were able to close it out, and that is a fantastic point for Na'Vi. Two well won points. <sighs> that was a phenomenal game. Like, it had everything. We had the sight rushes, we had the several multi-kills, we had the new player and leader popping off, Skiddy going absolutely nuclear, Spoit showing that you can still kind of make Finker work as well. Really packed with everything, including countless clutches, some down to the wire. What a great game for those two teams to start off on, Tim. What is it with Rogue lately and being involved in absolute nail <laughs> <Weird that. laughs> <laughs> It's becoming their trademark, Abs I think. And I'm here for it, Tim. We're here for it all the way. We certainly are. Just a ridiculous game, like you say. So much entertainment. Best one of the night so far for me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when it comes down to an 8-6 in overtime, and obviously we're casting it with a curse for it, Tim, that will always be what makes it. But let's go to a quick break. When we come back, I'm sure our desk have got tons to say about this game, so don't go anywhere.